Ryan, um, sitting back then, looking back on 23-24, the trophy uh, to, over your shoulder as well, when you look back on the last season, talk us through it and I suppose immense pride, especially after Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, definitely. I think, um, I think for me especially, yeah, it's, um, the last couple of days have been a bit of a whirlwind and um, memories flashing back and watching old videos of, of Sunday and um, yeah, I think immense pride um, for yeah, everyone associated for the club. I think um, it's been a long time coming. I think it's a, a target we've had um, since I've been here at the beginning of every season. Um, it's always obviously difficult, like there's lots of things you can't control and obviously on the pitch there's two or three, two seasons where we're nowhere near it and haven't been good enough. Um, I felt like we've always improved and I think this season, um, obviously starting with two losses, um, we were still quite positive. Um, the league I think this season is an ultra competitive and I think definitely the top four, five teams can all beat each other. and. Um, I felt like we were gradually, gradually improving, and it was a, a, a new squad. Um, pretty much, I think there were seven, seven, eight new players um, that we had to try to embed and try to get our style of play and um, get everyone used to each other in a group and like try to form a bond. And I think fast forward to now, um, I think the culture of the group and uh, the enjoyment of everyone spending time together. Um, from the coaching staff um, and the uh, and the players, I think is a, is a massive part of it. Um, and I think, yeah, I think to go twenty games unbeaten um, to win the league, I think is a testament to everybody. It's, it's really difficult to do, and um, I think the players did exceptionally well to just try to focus on one game at a time. Um, it's not always as simple as that, especially when you have um, amazing fans like we do. Um, making us dream and believe throughout the season, which has been amazing. Um, but I think especially the last six weeks, I think was one where, um, I, I think where we beat, I think it was a Enfield game. And then I think there was a, a month before a pre you know, our next game against Corey. So I think um, to try to remain focused and not get carried away a little bit, and it was all in our hands, I think um, the players and I think, Everyone at the club did really, really well to, to maintain that focus and um, hopefully get, get us over the line in the end. And so, Dean, um, I think that game probably sums some, some up our season where um, we start our games really, really well. Um, the so, Dean have been doing really, really well. Obviously, they, they've I think they've won a couple of cups as well and um, uh, beaten Ebbsfleet and beaten Dartford, so we knew that it was going to be a tough game. Mm -hmm. Albeit, they, I think they did have a couple of players missing, but. Um, to start off on the front foot and to score three goals in the first 15 minutes um, definitely made us enjoy um, the occasion a little bit more from, from then on. Um, and again, that's just a testament to the players that want to go out and finish exactly how we've um, performed all season. And um, I suppose, yeah, from the coaching staff, we can't thank the players enough to believe in, in, in how we wanted to try to play um, throughout the season. And, Trying to keep to our, ident our identity and our beliefs of how we want to try to play as a t as a team, and the players have to play a massive part of that because we can say and put formations in place and strategies, but unless the, the players believe it and um, it's something they enjoy doing, then um, yeah, you're only really as good as the players. So yeah, so a massive thank you to those. Moving away from from the league, it'd probably be. Uh, wrong to not touch on the FA Cup run, especially. Um, obviously, we had that record breaking afternoon against London Bees here, and then obviously the defeat in the final few minutes at Billy Ricky as well. And at which point, I think in that afternoon, we had BBC Radio London cutting away from the Premier League and WSL to give live updates mm -hmm. on how, how how we were doing in that game against Billy Ricky. If we look on the, the cut runs and, and the three we've had this year, how, how impressed were you with the team, especially in that FA Cup one and I suppose the League Cup one as well, that how, how they dealt with. with those disappointments to then put it behind and go for the league. Yeah, definitely. I think well, two, two to go out in two cups at the semi-finals. Obviously, um, you know, two, two tight games. Um, obviously, the Dartford one. I think um, we probably did enough to yeah. potentially win the game. Um, but if you don't score goals, you're never going to win games. And um, fair credit to Dartford for that one. Um, there's always a, there's always a tough game. I think, I think we did really well in that game and. 
minus our emotions really, really well in that. Um, and the Billy Ricky game in the, the Rospo midweek cup, um, I think we're one that up in uh, one or they scored two late goals as well. Um, I think I think I say it every season, every time it's a privilege to be part of the FA Cup. It's um, it's probably the best cup competition in the world to be a part of. Um, and yeah, to beat London Bees, the, the tier three team, and um, from my point of view, quite comfortably, and it could have been a little bit more comfortable as well. Um, and then yeah, Villarreal away, um, definitely, yeah, definitely a high point in terms of where we are, where we want to try to achieve. And um, obviously, that was my week to the game where Villarreal showed why they're in tier three with some of the players that they have. But for large parts of the game, first off, especially we. Um, we managed the game really well, and, and arguably, sh probably should have could have gone in at half time two 0 up, and it might have changed the game. It might not have done, but um, I think it's just like a, a good yard stick to, to measure against, and where we want to we want to continue to grow and push, and um, yeah, we'll definitely be looking to try to um, have another cup run. Obviously, next year we'll come in a, a stage later, obviously with the promotion. Um, but yeah, hopefully continue to grow the crowds for the, for the FA Cup and um, yeah, hopefully another little run next year will be exactly what we'll be targeting. You, you touched a minute ago on, on the start of the season with two defeats and as you know and I know and anyone who's watched that, that laser waffle as the fans call it because I'm nowhere I'm saying the acronym. <laughs> um, two defeats can sometimes be you know one too many in theory if you want to win the league and so how impressed were you with the side's kind of resilience and mentality and, and the club as a whole to then go from two defeats in a row and potentially before the season even got going, a title is out, out of your hands to then go boom, boom, boom and just fly and as you did, as we did for 20 games. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I don't have too much experience with the other tier five, um, but I kind of feel like ours is, is always really, really tough. It's probably one of the strongest regionals um, in the country. I think that the teams that do get promoted do tend to stay in their league and continue to press up. Uh, progress up, but yeah, I think um, like from our point of view, like um, to be fair, I think Jay and I was joking that after the the Epswich game, that at least we'll have Christmas off because we'll be done by then. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, massive. I felt like we, like like I said, like we, we were embedding some, some new like, new players. Um, but we changed a lot of how we wanted to try to play as well. Um, so we did think that we managed to go to go on a bit of a run and um, and, and challenge. Obviously, there were a point where Fulham and, and Dartford were also on a nice little run as well. So we knew that um, we, we needed to stay concentrated and, and maybe just concentrate on one game at a time. Um, and yeah, massive credit to the players and the staff as well. Like um, I think one of the main things we said at the beginning of the season was we needed every player to f fully buy into it, and um, every player definitely contributed to to, to that run um, and to everything else in it. So. Um, yeah, I don't think we could be prouder or, or say anything else about that. Yeah, to, and I think you, you have to go on seven or eight wins in a row to to even be in the, in, in the title run. So um, to get yeah, unbeaten in 20 games, I think it was 15 in a row. I think it was. Um, yeah, it's, it's something that we'll probably reflect on with pride, and mm. we'll definitely be thinking about it again next season and, and using those memories and reflections to remember where we were and continue to improve. Hopefully for next season. And looking then back on so the second half of the season, obviously the, the two games that stand out to me were the Dartford home game in the in the league in January, and then the Fulham home game on that midweek Wednesday night in well March, I think it was, wasn't it? Those two games were, I suppose, pivotal points in the season. You know, knocking a, a bit of wind out of two of the title walls. When you look back on those two, especially, how important were those for for the season, and and obviously what we've gone on to achieve with that piece of silverware next year. Yeah. I think the Dartford game, it, it was probably a, we had to win it to, if we wanted to be anywhere near it um, to continue our run. Um, I think the way the way we set about it was um, we just ensured that we wanted to ensure that we play our style and how we wanted to try and play, um, and just for, like throughout the whole game and um, what we wanted to be to be front footed, be aggressive, like all over the pitch, and I think. Um, I think at some point I surprised Arthur a little bit um, and maybe caught them off guard a little bit as well and I think um, for that like all three of our units were um, really really good outstanding and I think that proved as well like 
players coming off the bench, like Martha um, came on, Grace came on, like Rio came on, and then like uh, Tia came on, had a massive effect on it as well. So I think it proved that the strength from the tenet, togetherness of the squad was really, really good. Um, and I think, yeah, that's probably our most complete 90 minutes, I think, throughout. I think obviously Dartford scored two set flips, so free kick and a penalty. Um, but I think we had like, plenty more chances in that game as well. The full of game, I think it's a game of two halves. I think the first half we were really, really good in possession. Um, stopped them trying to play and um, had a couple of chances in the first mm. half to potentially go maybe two or well, three or four up. Um, second half, I think, proved what has improved for us as a, as a team, as a squad. Um, managed Fulham, played really, really well and we couldn't really get out. We couldn't really um, take advantage of any turnovers and we kept on giving the ball away cheaply. We couldn't mount any, any pressure. Um, and I think there was three or four moments where there were scrambles in the box as people mm. jump in. A goal line clearance. Yeah, there's a couple, couple of goal line clearances. <clears throat> um, luckily we're not in the uh, the Premier League, otherwise <laughs> it might have been a different story. But um, I think that just sums up the togetherness of the squad that people were um, literally running through brick walls to try to stop goals. And um, I think that's a part of this season which we've managed to do really, really well like through the tough moments. Mm. I think previous season we've conceded and we've drawn or lost when we probably should have won a game and this season um, I think that's looking back a game where we won where we might we could have lost or dropped points and um, I think that just strengthened everyone's resolve to, to keep, keep our run going. Finally then, if we move on to Sunday just gone and I, I assume you've just recovered from your hangover, um, talk us through not not the game, but I suppose the celebrations at down in New Haven. I mean, you got back here to the club, and then at the roundabout, and then moving into the Bishop and stuff like that. You know, that that togetherness on the on the pitch is, I suppose, reacted in in a way on the terrace as well, isn't it? Of the, of the togetherness between club, you know, and team and supporters now, especially with those celebrations from you know the moment that final whistle went on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. I think. Um it's kind of like yeah, six weeks waiting really. Um, obviously, you still need to. I mean, obviously, needed to beat Crawley, but um, we felt like if we played as well as we had done, then we, we should win that game. Um, but yeah, like it was. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. And I think, like you just said, like the the special bond that the players have and we have with the supporters. Um, fr yeah, from the final whistle. Um, obviously the celebrations as well and to see uh, was it two hours or just under two hours to get back um, just to see fans waiting for us here with some flares mm. um, but yeah it's just unbelievable some flares or pyro going in some people's eyes yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> naming no names <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I was surprised at every step so when we came, uh, when we came in here there was still, yeah, there was still lots of fans here and um, I think I was one of the last ones to get down to the, to the roundabout mm. um, I think I was walking with Ben actually, um, and not being obviously I've seen videos of the the, the last the promotional man about. I wasn't really expecting. Or wasn't really yeah. It's a little bit unknown for me, but yeah, to still see probably 150 people celebrating, um, just enjoying our celebration and enjoying our success was um, yeah a little bit lost for words. But it's, yeah, it's unbelievable, and even people who were yeah, in the EDT who had nothing to do with Dulwich and weren't there for the game were coming out and joining in um, just to see the joy in the, the players' faces. Um, mm. Yeah, it's going to live long in the memory. And, um, Is it? Because you, you don't remember much <laughs> <judging> by our <laughs> conversations. <laughs> I definitely, I think it's probably the first time I'll say that I'm buzzing that um, I live in the generation where there's mobile phones because I think every, every, other, yeah, every other day there's a, another video that comes out which um, makes me laugh, makes me mm. smile um, yeah and I think um, it's just a really good way to finish the season and I think it's hopefully going to inspire some fans to stay around and um, especially the, the population around about and with the local community joining in as well, like just to see how special the club is and how special our players have made um, the fan season as well. So I think um, there's been times this season where I've got buses around and people have stopped and just 
just asked how we're getting on and we've done it scarfs and everything so um, it's yeah the way that the players are definitely um, galvanized and the crowd's growing um, yeah I don't think we could be any prouder and um, I suppose the shout out has to go to the Pepper Army as well who have continued to support us all the way through um, yeah we yeah it's, it's been a, a, an unbelievable season so far so far, what have you got to yeah. add for the next couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, Ryan. Thanks for taking us uh, down a bit of a memory lane over the last kind of what nine months or so. It's been one hell of a season, that's for sure. And I look forward to catching up as and when you start signing players and retaining players and things like that as we focus on a year in what the FA Women's National League South East Division <laughs> One. I look forward to the acronym coming out for that one. <laughs> Cheers, Ryan. Cheers.